in a world where anything is possible, in a world where the normal and the paranormal reside, Almost Unbelievable brings to you the stories you want to hear, but fear to hear. Join us in the pit. You have joined the Almost Unbelievable podcast with Cats and Ranty. I'm Ranty. Hi there, Cats. I certainly am, and I'm glad you are too, because I'm really looking forward to today's show. Cool, cool. Me too, me too. And as normal, I am sure you've got a little bit of a trivia thing to discuss with us before we start the show. So with that, I better take a back seat and let you get on with it. Yeah, you know, I like my little silly uh, questions and quizzes. Today, I've got a true or false for you. I'm going to tell you a scary story. And all I want you to do is answer, do you believe it happened or not? Are you ready? I'm ready. Hit me with it. So in 2014, A 12-year-old girl, unfortunately, was held down and stabbed 19 times in Wisconsin in the USA. The girl survived and her attackers, who were unbelievably actually the same age as her, said that they had to do the attack because they were in such fear for their own lives and they believed that if they didn't do the attack, somebody called the Slender Man would come and kill not just them but their entire families as well. After these uh, two girls were arrested and they were interviewed and assessed, it also became clear that it wasn't just a slender man that they were scared of, that they'd also been talking to Lord Voldemort from Harry Potter and one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. True or false? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Uh, Well, you had me right up until the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle part. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Do you know something? I have a feeling that there's a streak of truth in this for sure. Um, I don't know about 19 times, or 19 times to be stabbed and still alive seems like an awful lot of brutality there, but do you know what? (sighs) It's one of these that I'm just going to say, I'm just going to go with my gut on this and say, okay, I actually feel that this is probably a true story. And you would be right, the girl did survive and the two girls who attacked her did stand trial as adults when they were 15 years old but obviously received lenient sentences due to very very clear and obvious mental health problems but this isn't the first time that the slender man has been cited as the reason that a violent attack has happened as recently as 2014 a 13 year old girl attacked her mother in cincinnati ohio with a knife and again the reason given was that the slender man was watching and would come and kill her and her family if she didn't do the attack In 2015, on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, a Sioux tribe noted that many, many Native Americans were unfortunately committing suicide. They believed in a suicide spirit that they described as the big man, which had very similar and transferable characteristics to the Slender Man, a very similar figure. And so much so that this incident became so notorious that it inspired a film called Beware the Slender Man, a documentary that was released in 2016. So the Slender Man, although he's quite new to the scene in in terms of demons or characters or paranormal uh, personalities, does seem to be the cause of some real world problems. Well, you know what they say when you've got a problem, you need to call somebody. Who do you think we could call? Well, who is the first person you always need to tell when you have a problem? Well, if you were on Apollo 13, I believe it would have been Houston. And funnily enough, today's guest is called Houston. Houston, are you there? I am here. I am ready. Awesome. Now, I have to say, you actually have a podcast of your own. Do you want to give a quick shout out to that and tell us what it's about? I do. So I also have a paranormal podcast. It's a bit lighter. It's a bit more uh, centered around comedy. Uh, But we do. I I have two co-hosts, Sam and Kevin. It's a show called Phantasmagoria. Uh, The podcast. We just take stories from listeners, very similar to this format. But we, if you're if you're trying to get scared, it is not probably the show for you. It's it is completely on the other end of the spectrum, where we try to make things as unscary as we can, try to give people a little bit of peace of mind. Uh, but yeah, we we have a lot of fun. We've been doing it for about a year and a half now. So it's a good time. We're on Spotify, Apple, everything. Well, we will make sure that we've got all the links in the description for sure. So if anybody wants to go and check those guys out, uh, the link will be on Spotify and YouTube. Right. With that, take it away, Houston. So when I was at university um, about, I want to say, two years ago, I'm a single male. I'm, I'm, living, I'm, I'm living the single life. So I'm swiping around on all the dating apps that you can find, you know, trying to keep myself busy while I'm not 
uh, hitting the books. And I find this, I get this connection with this girl uh, about 20, 20, 30 minutes north. Um, and I had nothing going on that weekend. So I thought, you know what, let's, let's make this happen. I, I mean, we all fall into that trap, right? Of, of swiping on a dating app and then maybe never doing anything with it. Like, so this was pretty, I was like, you know what, I'm finally gonna, I'll take this girl out. Let's see what's going on. So I picked this girl up, like I said, about 20 minutes north and she, we get in my car and like, we didn't really have a set plan. So we just drove around for a little bit. We chatted, we went and got some ice cream and talk. And when I, and when I, I should mention when we, when I pulled up to her place, I noticed that it was a, it was a really suburban area, but this, her particular house was in, in this cul-de-sac with a huge field of wheat next to it, right? Just this massive field of wheat and there was no street lights on it. So it, it, even though this was a very, very suburban area, like just nothing but houses, you turn this corner and all of a sudden it's like you're in like uh, farm country. Like they, like that's, it, it hits you like a brick wall. Um, and because of that, there's like no light. It's it's incredibly dark over there. Like other than what's coming from the houses, just because I I don't know why they didn't install power lines there, but it was it was a little eerie looking to begin with. But we pick her up, we drive around for a bit, and while we're driving around and we're chatting, she starts bringing up horror movies, how much she loves horror movies, and we start chatting about that. And I I mean <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to rag on this girl at all, but the stories got progressively like darker. I was like, yeah, I can enjoy horror movies. Like, let's have a conversation about this. But me giving a positive reaction to that gave her the green light of like, oh, okay, I can talk about the weird stuff. And she starts talking about like ghosts that have affected her family and like how I think it's been it's been years now but i like i distinctly remember her talking about how her dad needed to be exercised when he was young and i'm so <laughs> i'm driving around <laughs> and i'm like all right sounds good love it i'm going to drop you off pretty soon here i think so we're cruising around town and uh it's it's been like an hour or two and it, she was she was fine it wasn't like that it wasn't the end of the world so i i go to drop her off and we pull back up into the cul-de-sac over by her place and I pull up across the street from her house because we're still like mid-conversation. So I'm like, let's finish this up. I'll just park over by this wheat field and uh, we'll go from there. I'll figure out, I'll, we'll, I'll drop her off, I'll walk her to the door. And while we're talking, I'm like looking at her and she is t telling me this story and she just freezes mid-sentence and her eyes are like trained out like through the through the windshield so i look where she's looking and there's a dude standing like 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 at the end of the cul-de-sac like just kind of like between two houses and he's just super tall super 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 tall and he's like tilted at like a weird angle and he's got just like he's kind of like lank like this lanky figure lanky really skinny figure and so I'm now I'm staring and neither of us are talking. So we stare for about like, I want to say like 15, 20 seconds. We're staring at this dude, just like not neither of us saying a word. And then he starts kind of like limping towards us, <laughs> like in like a very, like, he's like dragging one foot behind him. <laughs> like it's, it's weird. Like it's just really unsettling to look at. And so like, we're still just kind of staring and then as he gets closer, I turn on my brights to get a better look at him. And it's still a, like a good distance, but I like, I up the light and this dude, I mean, he's still at a good ways away, but he freezes. And in that moment that he froze, this dude is bald. He's super pale, like just, just, just white. And he's in a hospital gown. And I'm, and he's like abnormal. Like it is like the proportions were not normal. Like it was, I, 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 it sounds like I'm describing a dream I had every time I tell this story. It was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. So he freezes in the lights and I, so, and, and he sits there for about five seconds and we're still not saying anything. And then he like doubles his speed and is like urgently limping towards us. It looked like a like a zombie from a movie. Like he is cooking. He is trying to get to our car. And so I just back up and I drove off. 
And so, and and we ser seriously were in silence for like another like 30 seconds as I'm driving away from the street. And we're like, okay. I'm, and I just looked at her. I'm like, I'm going to drive you around for like another hour and then we'll go back and see if I can drop you off. And she's like, okay, that sounds good. Like we were both like, and, and that's, and that's something that like makes it even scarier for me to a degree is like, like a piece of me, like, like years later is thinking like, okay, maybe I worked up what I saw. Maybe I, maybe, maybe I didn't actually see what I thought I saw. Like, I, I, I don't know. But the fact that she's the one who saw it as well. And it shook us both so badly gives gives like some weight to it in my memory of like okay no I'm not crazy I'm not I'm not misimagining it like someone else had just as scary of an experience as I did but so we're driving around for about another hour it's like 1 30 to 2 a.m at this point something like that and uh, we go back and we don't see him and there's a new car in the parking in the, in the cul-de-sac just parked on the street so we're looking around and we're like okay is this i don't know so so i i park and i'm like okay i'm gonna walk you to your door and she's like okay she's like but i'm gonna stand in the window and i'm gonna watch you walk back to your car i'm like okay i i wasn't gonna ask you to do that but i'm very glad you offered because <laughs> i'm just still on edge i walk her to the door and she watches me from the window and she watches me walk back and that was it that was the end of that there was not a second date <laughs> i was gonna say did you not marry the girl <laughs> no no we we figured we were cursed at that point there was no way um but it was it was wild and i, I gotta say like there was i had some real anxiety in like the coming weeks after because i a piece of me worried like maybe that was someone who really needed help just because of the nature of what we saw but it was it was wild man it was something like i've never experienced anything anything like that but I did uh, hear a fun fact I learned later was up in that area about it was like th another 30 minutes away. But up in that area where we were, there is an insane asylum. So I don't know. If that was <laughs> I don't know if he went back. I don't know if they found him. I don't know if he came from there. I don't know if he was waiting in the wheat field for one of us to be alone. Like, I have no idea. It was it was like truly one of the most terrifying things that ever happened to me, and I I don't consider myself to be a skeptic in a ske oh whoa excuse me a skeptic into these kinds of things. Like I just I just don't give any thought to the paranormal being real ever. But that is something that I have truly just no answer for. Like like there's no kind of logical conclusion that comes to my brain of the the what I saw because this dude was tall this dude was massive and just just lanky and like abnormally long limbs like it was it was freaky it, it was like if slenderman was a chemo patient is, is how i would describe it like that's why it's like the best like physical description i feel like i can give in terms of comparison see what interests me is that you've you've just explained that there's a, a mental asylum around the corner and then you say you say that actually no it's more paranormal <laughs> so it's like you, you still oh, yeah. kind of like you're looking for a logical answer and you've got a logical answer in your hands and it's, it's not enough but to you whatever it was still isn't the answer you know that, that... oh no yeah like like if, i would look for i would love i would love for someone to come forward and be like oh this was this or this was the someone from the insane asylum or maybe this was just a sick boy who lived on this street i don't know but, but I, I there's nothing I I've literally heard nothing that has like made me think I've heard people be like give me answers of like well he obviously seemed like out of his mind to a degree so even if it was someone who was maybe like uh, not all there and maybe needed a little help like maybe it wasn't a safe situation anyway so maybe don't stress about that I'm like yeah you're right you're you're definitely right but either way man it was just completely unsettling. So I guess, I mean, my question is, is going to be something along the lines of, do you think that you had, well, do you think that talking about this ghosty stories in the past with this woman pre to you actually turning up at the house had any effect on what you actually saw afterwards? So she's yes. telling you that, well, she's saying that 
her dad's been exercised and all this. So you've got you've already got these tingles going, you know. Yes, they're already exactly. going exactly. And, and there it's... wasn't like there wasn't any kind of like and and I've thought about that a lot too because there wasn't anything in that drive in that conversation where I was getting like major red flags. It just it the the red flag was from me as a single male thinking okay. I'm not super interested in someone who believes in this kind of thing. And she and she was like past the point of believing, which I, I'm fine with skepticism. I am I think natural curiosities, even in this kind of category, isn't anything bad. But it was to the point of like excitement. Like she seemed like very excited that her dad had been possessed. She seemed very like, like, oh, this is interesting. My life is interesting. Like, we've had so many ghosts. And it's like, it didn't affect her. And and I will say, to watch that bravado go out the door for her when we saw this figure, was I got a kick out of that later. I was thinking about that. But uh, no, there was nothing in the drive that was this major red flag of like, I feel weird. I feel scared. This doesn't feel like a good conversation. I hope she's not like maybe inviting some kind of darkness i don't know like like there was no nothing like that because like there's there's vibes like that sometimes you feel some like if, if someone's talking a lot about ghosts or exorcism or things like that sometimes there can be a, a situation where you maybe don't feel great and you're like i feel a little uncomfortable and then there was nothing like that at, at all so i it, it it has crossed my mind that it was on my mind because of the conversation but even even then this was an abnormal enough sight that I was completely floored, like completely shocked. I almost wish, like I, I almost wish that we hadn't had that kind of conversation because I, I truly believe I would have been like just as just blown away by what I saw. And how long did you did you have your eyes on him? Like how long were you actually looking at him for? I uh, just short of a full minute, I would say, before right. wow. I like threw the brights up on him, and then after that. When he started like cooking towards us, I I mean I was wordless. She didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I just backed up and we drove away like wordlessly, like just complete shock. But I will say, him him moving that much faster from when he was limping before was like mm. one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen in my entire life. There's something about that in like movies and stuff. Something that doesn't look like it should move fast when it gets cooking. Oh my gosh, I I'm not there for it. I don't like it. What about? I don't know. It sounds like an odd question, but the the skin tone did this? You know, the skin tone look all human, or did it look? Um, it like it was human, but it was it was so pale, just mm. just so white. Like it it was it was like 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 mm. barely any color to it at all. But he was at like a good distance. I did have my brights on him, but even then, like. I've seen other people in my brights before and they didn't like glow like that when my lights hit them. So I, I don't know, man. And uh, I suppose the obvious question like, I've got to ask is after the event, uh, I think you might've touched on this. So apologies if you did, but anybody else in the area sort of like report seeing anything like that? Was it any, any kind of papers or anything? Uh, I didn't, I didn't look too into it, honestly. Like I didn't, I didn't, it didn't cross my mind at the time. I mean, I just went home, told my coworkers about it the next morning, thought it was crazy and like just didn't didn't really think about it much until like like well, I shouldn't say didn't think about it much. I've told the story on my podcast like a decent number of times. But I it's just like cuz that's my only one, right? Like that's this is like I this is my only kind of experience, so it's it's something that I I mean, I'm not like up at night years later thinking about it but if i if someone's like has anyone had a scary experience like this is my one so at the time i was still just kind of in shock like i just was like i just didn't think to check the local news for slenderman waltzing about <laughs> trying to check into the hospital like i just wasn't it wasn't it, it didn't hit me at the time right okay so i got a question so everybody says whenever well if somebody says that they've seen something big well, big to one person could be not quite so big to another person, right? So when you say he was big, I mean, can you, can you give us a, a feet and inches size there? So to be fair, I'm I'm just an average average lad. I I've, I'm five ten, so like I'm not the tallest guy in the world. But 
Oh man, if I'm if I'm judging on memory alone, I want to say he was at least at least six and a half feet, like six six foot five, six foot six, somewhere around there. Like he was he wasn't little. He was he was big. And actually, for reference, one of one of my uh, podcast hosts is six seven. Like he's a tall dude. So like. I have like a decent reference <laughs> of like someone I spend a lot of time with to like compare that size to. And that's like, he was up there. He was like up around the same height as my buddy. And so, if, he could, if he could give us sort of like a weight, you know, just because he said he's skinny. I, I, yeah. I some kind of proportions here. Literally like 100 to 115 pounds, I would say. Is that all? Max. Oh, yeah. Dude, It it was, it was like... It was skinny. It was skinny to like the bone, like the legs, his arms. Like, I mean, he had a hospital gown on. So like, I couldn't, I couldn't get like a full, like, look at like, I mean, I wasn't like scoping out his bod very much, you know, but, but I could very clearly see his, his legs and arms and they were, they were just sticks, man. They were just tiny and just abnormally long too. Like it looked like his arms had like gone like past his waist not not to like a like he wasn't dragging his knuckles across the pavement but like definitely longer proportion arms specifically than than normal like they it was it was just the most unsettling thing i've ever seen if we're going to assume that looking at it from one way we're going to assume that he's escaped from the asylum how were they treating him in the asylum for this guy to who's six foot five to only weigh a hundred hundred and ten pound right yeah if if he was from there um is that how know. they treat people over there did they starve them like not that? to my knowledge i would have i mean i mean there's a lot of i mean if we want to get scientific there's like a, there are like psychological problems where like that will stop you from eating but this is like i guess i if i'm being honest i've never stopped to consider the, the, how the insane asylum might have treated this poor guy i mean is it possible he was coming to try and get some help and he, he was gonna help me feed me <laughs> if this story has kept me up at night it's because of that like did i leave this poor guy out <laughs> in a field of wheat to die did i just leave him um no but like like i said before the the other witness is what kind of concretes this mind is like no it's okay i saw something wild and i and that's okay because someone else saw something just as preposterous as i did and is probably telling this story on another podcast somewhere yeah imagine if we come across that if we come across somebody saying i was just out for a stroll and, and this car would be amazing that and they left me trapped in a field of wheat <laughs> yeah. I hadn't eaten for three cool. days, and I finally found the first person, and he flashed his brights at me, blinded me, and drove away. <laughs> Which was awesome. I mean, that guy oh, could have been spending years planning his escape from the asylum, and he's finally broke no. free. <laughs> I will say, in Utah, we have, we have some pretty good uh, institutions, I would say. Like, like it's a very, like, it's, I mean, I love where I live. I, it's a really nice place to live. I couldn't imagine that something like that like it's 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 a state with i would say a lot of community service a lot of community outreach there's a lot of that i would imagine that there wouldn't be any kind of major mistreatment at at something at like an asylum like i really don't think that, that would be i would be shocked if there was something on that level okay so if we're not going to assume that the guy got out from an asylum what did you see who was it where did he come from <sighs> Dude, you're asking you're asking the right person the wrong questions because I, I just <laughs> it's been years and I have no idea I have filed it away in my brain as things I can joke about and that's what lets me just kind of write this off as something I can laugh about but I I, I mean like I said the only reason that this is still paranormal to me in my mind even though like I have racked my brain trying to come up with what kind of solution it might be I I don't know because that's the other thing, right? If it was if it was an asylum, that's like another 30 to 40 minutes away from this location. Like that's a long way for a guy to get like and that's by driving. So for someone to get from there to this random cul-de-sac in X amount of time, like that's that's a lot of ground to cover on foot, let alone with a limp. And on top of that, there was like no 
immediate hospital nearby. So like a anything with like a uh, a hospital gown, it's just I don't I don't know. I just have no idea. I have one more random thought. Well, yeah, you met this girl. She lived in the cul-de-sac, and mm -hmm. she obviously met guys online. You know, you swipe and she meets right. up with them. And then she, it turns out that she's into all these kind of occult things and spooky stuff like that. I mean, is it possible that in some way she'd maybe met some tall guy in the past and <laughs> convinced him to come home with her and then locked him away and starved him? And <laughs> she looked so terrified because ultimately he, he'd got out of the house and you were the next victim. <laughs> So, so maybe, so maybe this wasn't a paranormal experience you're suggesting, but in fact, butting antlers with another lover is what you. <laughs> well, well, maybe she could. Maybe she was some kind of um, Venus flytrap, where she oh, would, okay. she would, she would bring the guy back and drug them and starve them, and she might have been a little bit insane. And yeah, I mean, you could have been the next victim. And when she was looking at this dude down the road, she might have realized who she was looking at. And he might have been coming to try and warn you or to try and kill her because of what he'd done. Okay. She'd done. okay. We, we are entering the world I, of wild speculation here, by the way. I know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you guys want to sit down and write a script after this? Like, frick. Are you this is great. Me? That's film. amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, you just don't know. I mean, she's started to tell you some weird stories. She, you got a little bit of a vibe about her. You were a bit unsure, and she was wanting you to drive her back home. And then before she had the opportunity to say, hey, do you want to come in and have a nightcap? Dude that she had six months before finally got out of the house and escaped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm convinced. I, I don't love that. You know what? Bullet dodged. You know what? I might just stick with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel like I got out of a situation and that and not like I feel like uh, uh, I'm dude in a hospital gowns tracking my whereabouts. <laughs> so. Well, maybe you could go around to her house and see if she wants to come on the podcast. <laughs> Jeez, I've, I've moved since. And there, if I, I would not be able to have tracked her down, I would not be able to track her down now if I try, if I put in like hours of effort. She's it was a one time thing like two and a half years ago. She is she is long gone, long gone. I don't remember her. I let me be real with you boys. I didn't remember her name probably a week later. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't. This is maybe your your audience's first exposure to me as a person, and I hope that that doesn't reflect on me poorly. But I truly like there. I, I was telling coworkers like, oh, what was her name? And I'm like, ah. I don't know. All I can think of is chemo, dude. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. So what's this dragging the leg thing? I mean, come on, tell us about this. I mean, give us a, hey, one what? last... Tell us, tell us one more time. What was? What, Just, why was it so scary? It was the most unsettling part about it. I don't know. There, that's something for me in like in horror movies, something that I've never enjoyed. Like, I, I can watch horror. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, I really enjoy film production and things like that. So a lot of the time when I watch these things, uh, I can't help but think of like how how the the, the the project rather than the final film, you know what I mean? Like thinking how they filmed this, what kind of effects they used, how much fun the actors had while they were doing it. So it's kind of hard for me to like really, really get there for horror. Um, but there's something about those movies where when something is like disfigured or, uh, or, or, or frail and is like moving quickly, like, like abnormally fast is abnormally dangerous, things like that. That is something that even then with watching those movies through that lens that I have is, is just so unsettling, so disturbing to me. Something that I just, just makes my stomach turn and it, it freaks me out. Um, something with that kind of movement, that sharp, jerky, twitchy movement mm. of something that shouldn't be able to do that. And that's what this guy did. Like, it was like, it, it was a, and, and when I say that he was like limping, when he doubled his speed, when he was like booking it towards the car, it was still like a full limp when he was doing it. But it was, it, it made him like do this like gallop. And that paired with his lanky frame, his like arms kind of flailing while he did it, his head bobbing around, and just the the pale bald figure, like it was just terrifying. Like I was staring in fascination, fascination, and like 
a little bit of like, what am I looking at in the first couple moments? And when he started doing that, it was like, nope, 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 I'm gone. I'm out of here. No, not even putting up with this at all. Like, it wasn't like, should we go? It was like, I, I'm driving away and I hope you're cool with that. And she was, so. You know, based upon everything that you've racked your brain over, how much would you say this is a paranormal thing? And if you, if it was a paranormal thing, what brought it there at that time? Why did it suddenly appear there at that moment? I mean, if it was, if it really truly was paranormal, I mean, I, I, cause it, cause it really does like, I, I mean, I don't believe in this kind of stuff. Like it really like, doesn't like, I love hearing people's stories. I love talking about it, but it's not something that I spend a lot of time and thought in, but it's, I would land it on like a 50, 50. Like, I don't know what I saw that night. Um, and so if it, if it wasn't paranormal, I'll feel, I really hope it was, I really truly hope it was because if it wasn't, I did a bad thing that night by not helping this guy out and maybe sticking around a little bit longer. I really did like, and, and I mean, given the situation, like, I, I don't think that there would be any blame assigned. I don't think I'm a bad person for doing what I did. I just reacted out of fear, but if it if it's not if it is par man I I hate say because it probably wasn't paranormal if I'm being logistic and so so I guess that makes me a bad dude but if it was which I really don't like there's a piece of me even now that is like it might have been but if it was I I don't know like it seemed with the way he was moving the way he was moving towards our car if it was paranormal the way he was moving was malicious. If it wasn't paranormal, it, it could have been a number of things. But if it was truly something paranormal, that was absolutely movement with intent to harm. And so, like, I'm, I'm glad I got out of there. But I wouldn't, I can't, I don't know. I don't know any stories. I mean, we know, I know that Slenderman's a creepypasta. And that's, like, the closest type of figure I can, like, accustom to this guy. Except he, he did have facial features. Like, I, I mean, there wasn't anything, like, crazy distinct. But he did, like, I could see an eyes, I could see a mouth, I could see a nose, so it wasn't Slenderman, but I mean, it was, it was the closest thing I could compare to it, and I don't know what that means in terms of where he might have come from, or what the origins might be, like, that, I, I have no idea, and maybe, maybe that's, maybe I'm missing out on some big cash not starting some kind of local rumor in that city of, of the, the chemo guy who hunts you down. I don't know. Okay, Houston, that was an absolutely incredible story. It was curious. I'm scratching my head thinking what it might be. You know, it was creepy, but it was it was funny as well. And I'm guessing that that's the kind of tone of story you get on your uh, Phantasmagoria podcast. Again, linked in the description. Am I right? Are all, are all the stories over there like that? Uh, so a, a lot of them are personal that people uh, send to us. A lot of listeners will, like, we usually read, like, two or three a week that listeners send in. A lot of the time, though, we, we scour the internet and find the more outlandish ones. Like, for instance, last week, someone had asked a question on what was their grand supposed to do after David Attenborough had passed. Like, how could they still commune with them? How could they still... How could they still interact with them? They really were curious on how they could keep in contact with David Attenborough's ghost. So we we gave advice on that. Um, th things like that. But, I mean, they get creepier. They, they scale all over the place. But we try to keep things more or less pretty light over there. But like I said, we, we believe that life is only going to be as scary as you allow it to be. So we try to find some of the scariest stuff we can without getting too dark or too too psychological or personal with people we try to keep things out of that territory we try to show people to look on the lighter side of things even in the face of paranormal activity so we we have a blast with it well i thought i thought that was excellent and that is phantasmagoria it is linked in the description and I highly recommend checking that out thank you well I, i'm just blown away i had a great time ranty i'll uh, pass it back to you well uh, i had a i had such fun in that i really did it was such an enjoyable story i mean to come up with something that he had ever have actually thought of before the idea that maybe the the lady uh, you know was in some way leading him back to some kind of trap and this was a guy that was you know had been around to the house and had managed to escape while she was out maybe that was why she was so terrified and who knows i mean just who knows there are a lot of 
weird people around, believe you me. And it's not all men. I mean, there can be women too. So that is clearly a possibility, as is the fact that it could have been some kind of mental patient that got away from the mental asylum that was local to them. But obviously, for the reasons because I am a believer in all these kind of things, I'm going to look into the more paranormal side of this and say that Houston was quite definitive when he turned around and said that this entity, this thing that he saw, was not of a human form. I mean, the arms didn't match in length, the fact that the gentleman was very large and very thin as well. I mean, you just wouldn't expect that somebody could actually live and exist with that kind of build. You know, it just doesn't make sense that somebody could actually be like that. And the way he walked and everything about him, you know, I mean, okay, yes, sure, maybe he was already triggered in some way because he had a little bit of a scare feeling because of this girl that he'd just met and she was telling him some kind of really weird stories and maybe that set his little hairs on the back of his neck standing up and maybe when he saw this thing he included more things than was actually there but again the fact that you know this has stayed with him for such a long time tells me that this was certainly something very out of the normal now could i definitively say it's paranormal no of course not could i say it's it could be a human absolutely of course it could but to me it's more paranormal than normal simply because of all of the characteristics of the event you know the the way the man walked the way the it, it sped up walking towards him very quickly and finally obviously the fact that it you know the proportions of everything were wrong on this humanoid body type of thing so i'm gonna say slightly paranormal do i say it's believable no would i say it's almost believable no i would say i would actually go back on the other side of things and say it's actually almost unbelievable but something was there, something was weird, something was out of place, and it stayed with him for such a very long time. So that's my feelings on it, Cats. What's your feelings? Well, I think my feelings are more driven by Houston's reaction himself. I think as we talked to him, he was obviously trying to come up with rational explanations for what he saw, and he didn't seem convinced that he'd seen something paranormal or supernatural. He seemed of uh, the opinion that there was a rational explanation out there, although he couldn't quite put his finger on it, but it was an amazing story. And of course, when you see something like that, it's gonna stick with you forever. The second thing that sort of strikes me is that the Slender Man himself doesn't have a long rooted history in mythology. He's not a character that you would expect to, to pop out of nowhere. The Slender Man's history is very, very recent. 2009, the character was created. And I think based on a Stephen King book, The Mist, I do believe. So he's a very, very recently created character. And as far as I can tell, he wasn't created based on old legends or old stories of existing entities, as you might say. However, one thing I am a little bit curious about is the timing of this incident. And it may be a, an absolute coincidence, but I do seem to remember around about the time that this incident took place, there was a massive rush in incidents in America and the UK of people going out and dressing as Pennywise the Clown from it, dressing as scary figures, deliberately trying to freak people out, deliberately trying to, trying to menace people and scare them. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if this, if this, creature this being was moving in an unnatural way maybe that's because the center of gravity was thrown off because it was some kind of kind of constructed suit for example and actually you know he wasn't as tall as that and his arms and legs weren't as long as that maybe you know i i have no idea but i would put it down to uh, a sinister prank on a dark night uh, especially with it happening by a cornfield as well i mean how how more cliched do you want to be when it comes to horror that that would be my opinion so i would say fantastic story and I'm sure it happened, but uh, in terms of any any paranormal, it, I would say unbelievable. Okay, well, prank or not, it was certainly a good story. And I don't know, I've still got this funny suspicion that maybe maybe this lady has more <laughs> more to answer for than than uh, than what she's been letting on. Maybe maybe Houston had a very lucky escape there. We we just don't know. Anyway, anyway, the story itself was strong enough to stay in the mind of Houston for such a long time and to get in touch with us, which is what we are looking for. We are looking for guests to turn up on the podcast and tell us their story. You don't get ridiculed, you get listened to, and we just give our opinion on what we actually think happened there. Now then, if you want to have an opinion on this, if you want to leave a comment, you can find us on YouTube. We do have a YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel is called Almost Unbelievable. 
And if you haven't already, you could subscribe over there and find us, give a like as well, and leave a comment. Also, if you're listening to this on the Spotify app, it really, really is going to help us if you follow us. So really, 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 if you enjoyed it and you want to listen to the next show that we put out, please, please, please follow us because it really does help us going forward. So with that, that's been today's show. Was it Slenderman? Who knows? We hope that we're going to get some comments from you guys. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you all in the next one.